Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. This pick a card reading is about what you need to know right now. This is a channeled message. Anything can come up. I just realized that I don't have my fancy feather close by, so let me grab it. And let's introduce the fancy feather. And we have group number one, starfish. Group number two, fire ant. Group number three, lamb. Pause the video if you have to, to see which group is calling you, what do you resonate with the most. And let's get into the video. Timestamps are below as usual. Hello, group number one. You guys selected the starfish energy. And this message is, what you need to know right now what do you need to know what's popping up what kind of message is coming through and immediately upon the starfish energy i'm getting the feeling that the people who selected this group have been waiting to hear back some kind of news or waiting to see if some kind of a process is going to go through i think of the person who's waiting to find out if they're going to get a certain kind of job or is looking for a new place to live. There's some kind of a transition happening for most of you who selected the star energy and you're waiting to hear back some kind of news, some kind of information. And what's coming up is just relax. What's for you will be for you. And also what's coming up when it comes to this energy is about the small steps. What I'm getting is for some people, say you get the raise and the raise is not as much as you thought it would be or is not as much as you would like for it to be. But what Spirit is showing me is the importance of how small things can grow into big things if we learn how to manage what we have and where we are first. I think of the person who didn't get the exact position that they wanted at work, but the position that they got allowed them enough free time to be able to work on, say, you're going to school and something about this job allows you some free time while you're at work to sneak off and study and get things done. So it's an opportunity to as they would say, kill two birds with one stone is what's coming up for some of you guys who selected this group. Or it's the situation where you're moving and something about the living situation or something felt like it's not exactly what you wanted, but right now you're not able to see how this is actually the best thing that can happen for you at the moment and how this situation's actually working for you. What I'm getting is the feeling of someone feeling like they're taking a step back when it comes to something that they're moving forward on. But what you need to know is that that step back or what appears to be a step back is the universe securing you, rooting you in. And of course, it's not until we're looking back, we are able to see how things make sense and why things have to be the way they are. And the star energy always brings me to uh, sudden and unexpected changes because of the five points within the star. So when it comes to this process or this thing you're waiting on, there'll be moments that feels like sudden upheavals or sudden and unexpected events, or you hear some news and in the moment, you might find yourself feeling a little bit confused as far as the path or how to go about things, but you have to trust the process. Because as we mature, we get so comfortable or complacent 
and feel a lot more like we have and feel like we have so much more to lose. So because we feel like we have so much more to lose when it comes to everything, this could cause us to be timid when it comes to taking action, being super careful and so careful to the point that we make mistakes because we project fear and anxiety into our situation. So with the star energy, I see how sudden situations can happen to shake a situation up and shake it up towards working out for your greatest good. So whenever sudden and unexpected events happen along the way, when it comes to this thing that you're pursuing or this new page that you've turned in your life, just trust and know that those sudden moments or the universe shaking things up and leveling out the playing field so things could work out in your favor. So in the moment when things feel a little bit hectic or scary or confusing, this is where you say, I'm not sure what's happening, but I trust and genuinely trust knowing that things are working out for you regardless of how they may seem and what things appear to be at the moment. So I'm going to be selecting four of these cards and the four cards that I'm going to be selecting. The first one reflects your current energy. And that makes sense with what I've been saying about you pretty much uh, turning a new page with the two of wands. The two of wands comes after the ace of wands and the ace of wands re reflects a new beginning where you're literally taking action wands deal with fire energy so it's taking action and moving towards something but as you could see with the two of wands this person has a globe or what appears to be a globe in one hand and the first one that sparked the idea which is the number one energy masculine energy and another wand here which is two which is nurturing energy and that's all about taking action and strategizing one step it's nurturing that thought so it could become something tangible so you may have had some kind of idea or inspiration it could be an idea for a new job or a new career or go back to school for something or wanting to relocate or wanting a new relationship new friendship connections and with this card this card shows you reflecting on how you're going to make things happen. And it definitely has to do with money for a lot of people because this card represents the situation. And the situation that we're talking about here is Ace of Pentacles. So it's a new job for a lot of people or a way of gaining more money. So the example that I gave about the financial situation is fitting to a lot of people. But just trust the process. There is money to be gained from whatever is happening here, even if it doesn't seem that way in the moment. I'm getting the feeling of having to take a slight step back in order to launch forward. And the slight step back is necessary. It's necessary for some because say with the job, you might not got the position that you wanted or the raise that you wanted, but you have more free time. And even though you wanted a certain kind of position, maybe it would require so much of your free time and energy to the point that there would be no time for other things that are important to you, other things that's really your end goal. So I'm getting how it's important to just trust the process. And when it comes to challenges, we have the Eight of Swords and the Eight of Swords having to do with challenges is so fitting. And it's so fitting because the Eight talks about systems and cycles and the swords is mental. So if you look at the person, they appear to be stuck. They're stuck because they're fearful that they'll cut themselves on these swords. And to me, this is where we could be fearful that something will go against us. So this person is choosing to be stuck based on certain thought process, a certain way of thinking, a certain way of dealing with things. And even though, yes, this person's eyes are covered and their hands are tied, the swords are behind them. So the worst is behind them, but it just goes to show how we could be so stuck when it comes to, or get so stuck when it comes to systems and patterns and ways of doing things and have a hard time trusting ourselves. And this has to do with blessings. And the blessings is the three of pentacles in the reversal position. The three of pentacles in the upright position shows a person demonstrating something, showing it's, it's like a person going to an interview and showing and presenting a presentation in the upright position. But in the reversal position, I'm getting the feeling of skipping the presentations, 
presentation stage. So say, for example, someone is hired into a job and take on a certain job description and they're able to move their way up and skip over certain steps that would be required for the average person entering into that role. That's what I'm getting with this card. So something about the opportunity that's presented to you, it will help for you to be able to skip over certain steps, be able to access certain opportunities that wouldn't be so accessible to you if you didn't enter or approach the way you did. And of course, with this card here in the challenge position, maybe you're so used to things being a certain way, it's hard for you to it's hard for you to imagine things any other way but what you're used to. And of course, patience is what's going to help for you to see the possibilities. When it comes to your energy, the horse energy shows up here. And the horse energy reflecting your energy just talks about how much you're ready for freedom. You're ready for something new and you're ready for freedom. When it comes to the situation, the elk energy is here. And with the elk energy having to do with the situation, it's 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 you ready for recognition, recognition, attention, and to be celebrated. I get the feeling of the person who has who has invested a lot of years in a certain field, who has invested a lot of years in a field or invested a lot of years in something and you're ready for the stability that should come for that come with that thing. You're ready for you're ready to be celebrated. You're ready for the recognition. You're ready for the reward that comes with that. And something tangible is what's coming up. You're or what's coming up. That's what you're ready for. So to me, when it comes to the situation, for some people it could be you want you're ready for that nice car that you've always wanted. You're ready for this home. You're ready for this role, this status. When I look at the elk energy, my mind always goes to how these animals are hunted and then placed on the wall as some kind of a plaque. So when I look at that card, that's what comes to mind is you ready for that plaque, that reward, that that thing that means that you've achieved certain level of status is pretty much what is what the situation is, is what you're ready for is what's important to you. And when it comes to say challenges, we have the peacock. And with the peacock energy showing up as challenge to me, or my mind automatically goes to the number six and the number eight energy in numerology and how the number six and the number eight energy deals with materialism and material things. And when I think of um, what the elk, what came to mind for the elk energy and the peacock showing up when it comes to challenges, this brings me to how our ego and the way how things look or presentation might be a challenge. When I said the number six or the number eight energy, the number six and the number eight energies are energies that tend to define success based on material gain, or at least when these numbers are operating in a lower vibration. So this is what, when you achieve a certain status, it would mean you're successful when you marry a certain looking mate, when you have a certain home or car. But the thing is, these things are always depreciating and losing value the minute that we get them. So we'll get them, but then there's a new version. There's an updated version and you don't have that updated version. So the feeling of happiness, it doesn't last long. And also with the peacock energy, I'm thinking of how someone could say, be motivated by, by superficial motivations to the point that a person keeps what's the image that I'm seeing is someone pulling themselves more in the mud. What I mean by that is I admire the person who can be disciplined and hold themselves back from investing in unnecessary things prematurely because when you're when you're conscious of your actions and conscious of your weaknesses, your next move could be your best move and you could create freedom for yourself in the future. I think of the person who get the new job and because of their age and their peers, they jump and invest in a really expensive car or jump and purchase a home at the wrong time. And when I say the wrong time, maybe at that time, it wasn't as affordable to them as it could be if they just waited a little bit 
or if they just waited just another year or two and got themselves to the position where certain debts and things were cleared up and then created a, po a passive opportunity for themselves. Something about someone ru rushing things for the sake of status and image is what could be a challenge. And this is what causes a person to be stuck. I think of the person who hates their job, but they keep upgrading their car. So the loan, the debt, it, it just keeps getting bigger. It's going nowhere. So this is the person that hates their situation, but they keep adding to how they're going to be stuck in their situation, opposed to using the extra money to invest in their way out or instead buy their time back by taking less hours per se at work and budgeting themselves and using the extra time to transform their situation. I just get how material things are creating a shackle around a person's feet and a person's choosing to be stuck in a situation. When it comes to say the blessings, when it comes to your overall reading, the cheetah energy is here. And with the cheetah energy here, the cheetah energy is helping you to say stand out, stand out, meaning see what's important to you and not allow yourself to get caught up in other people's paths, get stuck on other people's journeys to where they wherever it is that they're going. The cheetah energy, when I look at the cheetah energy, I look at how the cheetah energy is standing out amongst the background and how the cheetah is moving forward and taking action. So when it comes to your situation and what you need to know about your situation, how the star card came up, which reflects sudden and unexpected changes, opportunities being presented to you, but maybe presented to you in a way that doesn't feel like what you might think you want at the moment, but there's an opportunity that comes from it. When it comes to say the blessings, the cheetah energy gives me the feeling of freedom, you getting a lot of freedom and opportunity to really hone in and aggressively move forward towards some things that you've always wanted to move move forward on. And yes, the cheetah energy, like the peacock and the elk is looking in the past and the only card that's looking kind of forward and towards the future is the one that represents you. With the cheetah energy here as blessings, you get to reflect on some things you've always wanted, some things you've always wanted to do. And there's an opportunity of freedom that can come from how things are playing out for you, even though it might not it might not be that easy for you to see that if you're more reflecting on, say, status and how you want to press your peers or keep up or compete with your peers. Because the challenge, again, is being stuck in old systems and then the peacock energy stuck on the material aspect of things and the ability to flex and stand out. But when it's all said and done, the blessings is you'll get an opportunity to get into a door that you would have never been able to access without the way things are playing out. And then again, the cheetah energy allowing you freedom and momentum to really take action in ways that wouldn't have been possible for you if things didn't play out the way it did. Group number one, I would love to hear what this is about for you personally. If you'd like to book a tarot card reading, the link is in the description box below. If you'd like to check out the weekly exclusive content, pick a card readings and other things that's happening on Patreon or support the channel by becoming a member on Patreon, that link is also in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number two. You guys selected the ant energy and immediately upon looking at the fire ant, I felt myself feeling a little bit anxious. I felt myself feeling a little bit overwhelmed and immediately upon looking at the card, you appear to me to be at the center and this is everyone around you with their expectations or even wanting your help or some it, it just feels like you're being spread really thin so with the ant card showing up as far as what you need to know right now what's coming to mind is do not over promise and under deliver it is best for you to when people ask you to do something, 
it's best to say I'll get back to you and shoot them a text if you feel uncomfortable with speaking and tell it, telling them no to their face. But if you find that you're cornered and someone calls you up and you feel stuck in the moment, figure out a way how to wiggle out of that conversation and say, hey, something came up. Let me get right back to you. I mean, let's keep it real. Everybody is not that comfortable or confident when it comes to being assertive, being direct, or even being confrontational. And I'm getting the feeling that you are you might feel like you're being taken advantage of or might feel like you're being spread too thin. It's like everywhere you turn, someone has their hand out and it doesn't have to be financially for you. It could just be they want your attention. It could be that you have children that depend on you and then at work it's the same thing and what's coming to mind is boundaries and boundaries is said so much but boundaries is not said enough because as children we don't most of us don't learn proper boundaries because you're a child you don't pay any bills and you appear not to have much responsibility so you just you have no boundaries it's like you're not taught boundaries. And with everything that's happening around you, it's time for you to enforce them and first learn what are your boundaries. And of course, your boundaries will be different in different situations with different people. It's not a one size fit all type of situation. When it comes to say your energy, I'm just getting the feeling of someone feeling stuck in the center and it's like people are coming from coming at them at all angles. Like for me, I'm an introvert. So whenever I enter a room or an event or a place, I like to find a corner and that's where I like to observe the room. I don't like to be in the center because when I'm in the center, it just feels, I just feel pulled in so many different direction and it feels like with you you're at the center of something in some situations for some people it could be that you receive some kind of a recognition or attention and from this recognition or attention you're at the center and a lot of people are pulling on you and wanting your attention or it could just be for some people something has recently happened within your family and you're the person that people tend to go to when things get rough. Maybe for some of you, it's because of how you're able to nurture everyone and make other people feel comfortable and safe. And then for others, it might be that you are the main provider. So for that, everybody seems to look to you when things go down because maybe you're one of the more responsible ones in the family. But however it is or whatever it is, what I'm seeing is you needing to know your limits and needing to know when you need to say no, when you've had enough or when you can't afford to do any more and not feel any guilt in doing that. I'm thinking of how some people have a hard time with putting themselves first or even recognize when they're being abused or mistreated but only can recognize or notice when it's happening to someone else. I think of the person who can easily defend, fight for other people and come to their rescue. But when it comes to themselves, they have a hard time coming to their own rescue. And again, that could tie into, say, childhood experiences where as a child, it might feel like it's normal when certain things happen to you that isn't so normal. And it's not until you see it happening to someone else, you find yourself getting in extreme rage for some people or feeling super passionate. And some of that passion might be coming from your inner child, recognize the injustice and wanting to feel that sense of protection and justice. So that comes out when it comes to you defending and standing up for other people going to be selecting four of these cards and the first one is going to represent your energy the second is the situation the third is what's challenging and the fourth is blessings as i'm speaking i feel a little bit a little bit uh emotional but the word that was going to come to mind was immature. So I don't know why immature is significant for you guys and immature with emotional. I'm getting the feeling of someone feeling guilty for showing emotions 
feeling guilty for speaking up about certain things, feeling guilty for having feelings, or even feeling guilty for saying no in the past. And that's something that I had to work on for myself, meaning remove titles and ask myself if this person didn't wear this kind of title, would I accept or tolerate this kind of behavior from anyone else? And of course, the answer is no. So my answer is right there. And that helps me to enforce my boundaries and decide what I will allow and what I won't allow. And it should be fair grounds. And for the longest, it took me a long time to come to that because I used to feel like because certain people are familiar and have certain titles, it meant that they were allowed to mistreat you. It meant that they were allowed to manipulate and do whatever it is that they choose to and you just have to accept it because, oh, this is my this, that, or the next. So when it comes to, say, your energy, your energy is the Four of Cups in the reversal position. When the Four of Cups is in the upright position, a person is in a mindset or in a space of just not wanting to be bothered. Some people could say ungrateful. But when I look at the card in the upright position, I could see it as a person just, I could see it as feeling numb, feeling numb and even depression. And for the first time, I'm seeing it as depression in the, in the upright position though, not saying that's what you're experiencing, but in the upright position, I would see it as depression in the sense that someone's so deep in their feelings because it's a cup card to the point that they can't see what's being presented or offered to them. So they're rejecting everything. But in the reversal position, this tells me that you have entered into a state or into a phase where you're more receptive than you were before, where maybe before you didn't know your worth and now you're starting to know your worth. And that's probably what ties into say boundaries, why that came up for you. When it comes to, say, the situation, the judgment card comes up. So with the judgment card, this gives me the feeling of, say, someone having faith and waiting for something and then something finally coming through. But I look at how the judgment card shows up as a situation and your energy is the four of cups in the reversal position. And with the four of cups in the reversal position shows how you're receptive you're receptive to whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. You're receptive to whatever it is that you're asking for. So it makes sense with the judgment card in the upright position because that means that, you know, like I look at these people and it's like they were waiting. I think of, say, the stories of, oh, when you die, you go to heaven or hell. So I think of these people being buried in, in their coffins. And finally, it's judgment day. The horn is blown and they're resurrected and what they've been waiting for finally came through. So I get that for you. Whatever it is that you've been waiting for will come through for you when it comes to the situation, something you've been having faith on. So with the fire ant card, maybe you've been ha holding, having faith, maybe say, for example, the person who started their own side hustle, or you've been committed to this job for the longest and you're trying to climb up the ladder. And the judgment card is like, finally, you're getting that raise. Finally, you're getting that recognition. For the person who's doing their own business, finally, you're making better money. For the person who, say, you create content, finally, your page is growing. Finally, you're getting that kind of attention and recognition. And when it goes back to, say, the four of cups in the reversal position, you had to come to a space where you realize that you're worthy and deserving. Where before, maybe you didn't realize you were worthy and, des worthy and deserving, so you were probably good at supporting and giving to others, but not so good at allowing others to pour back into you. And with that card in the reversal position, you learn that you're worthy and deserving of others pouring back into you. And you're getting, you're getting, you're getting the thing you had faith about. And when it comes to the challenge energy, we have the four of pentacles in the reversal position. So the number four energy repeated twice. And the number four talks about stability and foundation and commitment, seeing something through and committing no matter what, which requires discipline. So with the four of pentacles in the reversal position, as far as challenges, when the four of pentacles is in the upright position, it talks about hoarding for me. It talks about having a fear or a lack mentality when it comes to things or even finances. So 
goes back to fear of losing so we hold on so tight but in the reversal position to me it talks about being more free when it comes to that and it being in the challenge position this brings me back to the fire and energy and maybe you receiving certain things but you're you're being so free when it comes to how you give your energy or how you give your money and that's something that you need to look into and be more conscious and aware with how you give your money how you give things and because for me it's all about giving with discernment it's me allowing god to let me know who to give and also to me being present and recognizing the importance in giving people who are trying to help themselves because people who are already trying to help themselves are more receptive to receiving and at the same time they're grateful because they don't expect anything from anyone to begin with a lot of people say they don't expect anything from anyone but at the same time are entitled so there's a difference with the person who's grinding and working hard and you try to help and they're receptive and appreciative of the help and you can see how they've grown elevated or transformed based on the help that you have given or the help that you have received because i've been on the receiving end where i've been working hard on something and people were supportive in my life and they were to help me push me up the ladder i was trying to climb up i was on the ladder and i was climbing and then they came along and gave me a push they probably wouldn't have been so generous to support my cause if they didn't see that i was all i wasn't if they didn't already see me committed and working hard at it when it comes to the blessing the full energy is here so the full energy showing up as blessing talks about optimism and how you learn to be optimistic from everything that you've been through how you learn to trust the universe from everything that you've been through because again the judgment card the judgment card talks about having faith in something and it coming through for you. And the judgment and the fool card are both major arcanas. Major meaning, when I think of major arcana energy, I think of change or energy that's present that we cannot change, but we have to adapt ourselves to that energy. And when I look at the minor energy, I think of a situation coming and there's nothing and you can influence or change it like what comes to mind is how i'll dream about certain things before they happen and from dreaming about it i get to show up and respond to the situation how i want to in order to change the way how it would end and then there are certain situations where you can't change the way how they would end like say when i dreamt that my grandfather was going to pass away. I didn't know that's what that meant at the time. But to me, that was like a major arcana moment. It's not something that I could have stopped. But what the dream helped me to do was to be more conscious and present in all of our interactions leading up to the last time we saw each other, which he passed less than 24 hours after that. So to me, the major energy is energy that you cannot stop. But at the same time, the universe helps you to be prepared by showing you this is what's happening and you get to you get to respond to it according and make the most of it and then the minor is like say me having a dream or a premonition before going to work that I'm going to have a certain kind of interaction with a client and then when the time comes and me and the client is having this conversation instead of operating the way how I would normally operate and be so direct and straightforward which even could appear as aggressive to some people, I hold back and say nothing because the dream showed me how things would play out. And when it comes to, say, the spirit animal card having to do with your energy, we have the earthworm. So with the earthworm energy here, it talks about how stability is something that you're seeking. Stability is something that you're seeking and also renewing because whenever I see the earthworm, I always look at how this part of the earthworm's body was chopped off cut off or something happened to it and it was able to grow back so when it comes to the you guys who selected this group i'm getting the feeling of you guys uh having a second chance at something feeling like you have a second chance at life i think of the person who feels like they're getting older and feel like they're running out of time and it's like i need to make this happen this is my chance if i don't make this happen something might never happen for me and then it could just be the person experiencing some kind of disappointment or loss in the past and you decide to put yourself back out there. You're a little bit nervous, but 
you know, you're growing a new body, you're, there's a renewing when it comes to your energy is what I'm getting with the earthworm energy. When it comes to, say, the situation, we have the elephant. And when it comes to the elephant dealing with the situation, something about the elephant and the judgment energy just matched to me because I think of how elephants are so powerful, strong, and ancient. I think of how big they are and how they can make everything rumble and shake when they come through. I think of how peaceful they are, and, but at the same time, how they will s defend and protect those who are important to them. So when it comes to, say, the situation, I just, with the elephant energy here, I just get faded. Something about your situation, the situation that's on your mind that you're considering when watching this video, it's faded, it's supported. It's, it's blessed is what I'm getting with the elephant energy. Um, when it comes to, say, challenge, the shark energy is here. So with the shark energy having to do with uh, challenge, I'm getting the feeling of impatience and aggression. Maybe for some people, something about your situation where you could find yourself overdoing it when it comes to supporting and helping others or being greedy when it comes to something, but being too aggressive and needing to be more patient and reflective is what the spirit animal is saying. And when it comes to the blessings, the lizard energy comes out. And with the lizard energy coming out, I'm thinking about someone being transformative, having thick skin, or learning to have thick skin from the overall situation. The overall situation could have helped you to strengthen your faith when it comes to the universe, strengthen your trust and belief in yourself, realizing that if you focus and commit to something, it will work out for you because something is happening for you. Something is working out for you. Some kind of recognition, some kind of attention, something is taking place for you. And the lizard energy just brings me to recognition, attention, transformation. I think of how the lizard shed skin, but more than anything, tough skin, tough skin, transformation and recognition. And with the full energy above that, you just have more faith. So moving forward, the next time you say you want to do something or make something happen, you're going to believe in yourself a lot more because the way how things played out when it comes to whatever this thing is that you're listening about. And of course, when we go back to the situation is judgment. You had faith on something and it came through for you. The universe came through for you. God came through for you. That's what I'm getting when it comes to the message here. Something came through for you and you're learning that you need to believe in yourself more. You need to have more faith when it comes to what's happening. The only thing that I'll touch on again when it comes to challenges, when it comes to challenges, you just it's important for you to not spread yourself thin and, and have proper boundaries. Because if you don't have proper boundaries and you continue to spread yourself thin, you can easily find yourself starting to resent people. And it's not people that's the issue. It's you fearing confrontation or fearing the negative consequences of speaking your mind or sharing your truth or telling other people no. And once you get over that, a lot can change. And that's the thing that you probably need to work on or focus on the most. But overall, I love your reading. If you would like to book a tarot card reading, the link is in the description box below. If you would like to support the channel by becoming a member on Patreon or check out the exclusive weekly pick a card readings and other content on Patreon, that link is also in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me an orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. You guys selected the lamb energy and this message is what you need to know right now. And for the first time, I'm looking at the lamb energy and the lamb looks so adorable. The lamb looks so cute. But what's coming to mind when I look at the lamb energy is you're too comfortable when it comes to your situation. Something about your situation is too comfortable or you're playing things way too safe or some it's, it's like some. Yeah, like I'm getting the feeling of someone playing things way too safe and I'm 
I mentioned this line from this song in one of the daily, um, in one of the daily, the daily energy update, horoscope, tarot, numerology videos, and it's coming up for you guys. And it's scared money. Don't make no money. If I ever go broke, I'm going to take your money. And I'm getting the feeling that you guys want something. You want to make something happen, but you're afraid. And when I think of the line from the song, scared money, don't make no money, is that I'm thinking of a person who's so afraid and they're protecting every little that they have. And then somebody else come and takes it from them because they're so afraid of losing it. So what I'm getting when it comes to this energy is that you got to shake up that fearful energy, whatever it is that you're afraid of losing, let go of that fear because that fear is keeping you stuck. You just have to trust and move forward. What's coming to mind is one of the Bible stories that I've heard about how God gave different people different amounts of gifts. Like say one man was given one gift, one was given two, one was given five, one was given, you know, people were given different amount of gifts and some went out and multiplied what they were given while others buried theirs. And then when it was time for them to get back in front of God and God was like, what did you do with the gift? It's like the one who multiplied theirs, they were given more. And the one that buried theirs, they weren't given anything because you got one thing, one gift, and we all have a gift. We all have a role. We all have something to offer. And a lot of the times, most of us overlook our gifts, overlook our talents because it, it doesn't look like a glamorous calling. It doesn't look like something that was market to, marketed to you. You know, it's, you're not singing, you're not dancing, you're not reading tarot, you're not reading, doing this or that, the thing that appears to be more glamorized. So you downplay and overlook your gift or talent. But the person who did nothing with their one gift, of course, what's the point of giving them more? And it just goes to show how you might have a gift or an ability of bringing people together, or you might have a gift or an ability of telling stories or sharing certain things. And just from you utilizing that gift or ability, it brings you into another one because as you build on that one thing that you're good at, you become aware of something else. And then it's like, boom, you gain another and another. But that would have never happened if you didn't start with the one that you do have. And that's what I'm getting when it comes to this group. I'm getting the person that might I'm getting stutter. Somebody used to stutter as a kid and you stuttered because you you, you anticipated too much what it is that you were going to say or worried a lot about how people would receive what it is that you were going to say. So that kind of created isolating yourself from others. And for some, it wasn't that you stutter. You, you, you worried about other people judging you about how you speak or thinking that you sound stupid. And I learned that it's not that other people judge us, is that we judge ourselves and sometimes project that energy onto others. And sometimes we hold a certain energy within ourselves that when we're around people who have it within them to be a jerk, we help to activate their inner jerk and we become a perfect match for them to clown or make fun of us because we expect to be clowned or made fun of. I remember for me, when it comes to communicating, I wouldn't open up and I wouldn't speak. Whenever I would speak, I would speak so low and I wouldn't even complete my sentence. I would start saying something and then cut off in mid sentence. And it made it hard for people to take me serious or even tune in and listen. And I didn't even really want them to listen because I was afraid that they would judge me or think that I sound slow or stupid or something. So the same thing that I feared was happening, but it was happening because I was creating that kind of environment because of how I was showing up. And then over time, I started paying attention to when I would speak, how people would interrupt me, talk over me and dismiss me because I would speak so low, it would be so hard for them to hear me. And it seemed like I didn't want to speak anyways. And then over time, I worked on being assertive and speaking out loud and speaking confidently. And I just observe how people shifted their energies towards me. But first, it was me who shift my energy towards myself, how I thought about myself and other people change. So when they say, if you want to experience change, change yourself first, that's so damn true. It is so true for me. It is, it is so true for me. 
you wouldn't imagine. So when it comes to the lamb energy, I'm getting a lot of people feeling stuck and feeling stuck and feeling overwhelmed and some people feeling like oh i can't stand people the world is this and the world is that and it's so much easier to blame the world than to say what is my role in this how can i what can i do to make things better it's so easy to point the finger at someone else or at something else to justify our situation and i had to recognize that within myself and realize that the more I point the finger and allow someone else to be in charge of what's happening with me is the more I am a slave and I will have to wait for someone else to change themselves in order for me to experience happiness. And I realize that no, if it's going to be, it's up to me. So whenever we're unconscious about our, be our beliefs or the way we see things or even our behavior, that unconscious thought dominates our life and our experiences and it's easy to see how everybody else is the problem but not seeing how we're showing up and our role in it so when it comes to the first card the first card reflects your energy and with the hermit energy reflecting you it's in the reversal position so I'm getting the feeling of, say, you experiencing a time in your life or a phase where you are having a hard time getting still, a hard time being quiet. And when I say be quiet, I don't mean sitting by yourself, scrolling through social media or watching YouTube. I mean, pulling out the journal and some kind of a deep reflection. Reflection is what's necessary with the hermit energy. And I'm getting the feeling of someone having a hard time reflecting maybe not seeing your role when it comes to something. And when it comes to the situation, we have the 10 <clears throat> of swords in the upright position. And I'm happy for you that it's in the upright position because it shows that something has come to an end. So the situation is some kind of an ending and this ending may have been so devastating to you that it has froze you in place, you're stuck. When it comes to the hermit energy in the reversal position, again, what is your role in it? Even if the other person did you dirty? What was your role in it? Because I found in past situations when someone appeared to do me dirty, my role was me seeing their potential and it benefited me to see their potential because if their potential proved to be true, then they would fulfill this ideal story or fairy tale that I had going in my mind. And when it came to my fairy tale or ideal story, they were the perfect look to complete me or maybe that job was the perfect one to say that I'm successful or that car or that home. It was the perfect thing to complete the story in my mind. And that's what I'm picking up here. It's like, what is your role in it? And your role in it might be that you are a equal participant because you had something to gain in seeing things for what it is opposed to trusting in your intuition and hearing when your intuition was telling you something doesn't feel right, something doesn't sound right, and you feeling it in your gut that you can't trust the situation or feeling it in your gut that maybe it's not time to make this kind of investment. It's like you felt it in your gut, but overlooked it. And now this is what you're experiencing. And to me, this is a celebratory moment. It was for me because it started to help me to see, okay, wow, this is how I'm creating my reality. This is how I'm contributing to a situation. And it's, it's not about becoming perfect overnight. It's all about peace for me. It's never seeking perfection, it's seeking peace. But when it comes to this whole situation, to me, it's about learning from this moment and realizing what my role in a thing is so that I won't do it again so I can start creating and having the experiences that I want. When it comes to, say, challenges, we have the Knight of Wands in the reversal position. With the Knight of Wands in the reversal position, it talks about being hesitant to take action, feeling stuck. It's like not wanting to move on from the current situation or just not wanting to move, period. I think about the person who experienced something that they perceived as traumatizing and it just froze them in place. And it's like they can't take action or move forward. I think of the person who had a tough experience, so it's hard to leave the house 
or it's hard to speak up in groups or it's hard to meet people. And whenever I experience something that shakes me up that bad, I force myself and I'm not saying everybody needs to do what I do. But I force myself to reintegrate, if that's the word, to bring myself back into the environment because I don't want to be paralyzed or crippled from a thing mentally or emotionally. I don't want that thing to dominate me or control my life that way. A big thing that stands out for me is like learning how to trade and having a bad trading there, a bad experience. The next day you get back into the market, you're going to be hesitant and a little bit scary because of what happened yesterday. And that's when I'll have to force myself to keep going because I don't want to be frozen because of a bad experience. And when it comes to say blessings, I love the blessing for you because it's the king of swords in the upright position. And with the king of swords in the upright position, I think it's so fitting for the situation. So the situation was an ending, but with the king of swords in the upright position, it shows how it made you a better thinker, a critical thinker for some people, you're able to think things through even deeper or ask the proper questions and not get your emotions involved or say before, like I mentioned with me, I'll project onto a situation or a person because I want to create the ideal situation, some kind of a storybook um, thing that's happening in my mind. But with the King of Swords, it's like you're not approaching things in that way anymore. It's like you're looking at logics, you're looking at what is presented in front of you, the reality of a situation instead of the possibility, the potential, what a connection could be. It's more of what is it right now? What is it in the next moment? And just taking things one moment at a time, one day at a time. When it comes to the spirit animal, you have the owl energy here. So with the owl energy here, you're being guided to go within. You're being guided to go in the dark. I look at the hermit energy and how the sun has gone down to where the hermit has a light inside his lantern and the light for the first time makes a star that um one two three four a star it's like a five-pointed star that i'm seeing in here for the first time so to me it's like going within and spending time in silence and having this sudden and unexpected knowing or perspective that completely shifts and transforms your situation and with the owl energy showing up here it just talks about how you need to go within the dark and going within the dark means observing and reflecting within yourself like i like to ask myself questions like what was it about me that allowed this where is it coming from what's in me that allowed this and sometimes it could be something as simple as Say, for example, as a child, you experienced abandonment and you didn't feel loved and supported. So that could be the reason for, say, being a people pleaser, or that could be the reason for, say, projecting. Maybe growing up for some people, there was a lot of gaslighting and manipulation within the household. So it's hard to tell what's really real from what's not real. So a lot of the times you daydream and see what's not there because it just feels better that way because you it wasn't okay for you to trust your logics you know and that's not everybody i'm just giving that example but when it comes to the situation the raccoon energy shows up so with the raccoon energy showing up with the situation there could have been some kind of a manipulation or deceit that you experienced and like i said it was so shocking where you could find yourself having a hard time moving forward or trusting but i love how in the end basically it leaves you seeing things so much better and when it comes to say challenges the fox showed up so the challenge for a lot of people could have been decep dece deception manipulation with the fox energy i think of something being so cunning so smooth to where you question your reality you question your experience you question what's happening so again it could go back to say childhood experiences where you doubted your you doubted yourself a lot so even when something is clearly not the best, it's easier for you to say it must be me. It's not them. Something must be wrong with me because for some people, you're probably so used to always being the problem, always being the one that's wrong. So you assume that maybe this person is the best or this situation is the best when really it wasn't the best for you. And instead, you're projecting onto it, wanting to see it as something else, hoping that it could have possibly complete you in some way. When it comes to blessings, wow, I love your blessings. This is one of my favorite spirit animals. I love your blessings and I love the energy that 
reflects you. And when it comes to this, I love how, say, the energy that reflects you and the blessings are air element. The, the situation is an air air elemented situation and the blessings is also air elemented so with the crow energy the crow is all about survival so whatever it is that you've been through has leveled you up when it comes to being a beast and i say a beast because for me every time i go through something that didn't kill me that felt like it was going to kill me and i make it through the other end it's like i feel like i get another star on my chest like i feel more bossed up i feel like no one or nothing can try me because I've been through so much and I just feel so fearless. And that's what I'm getting for you guys when it comes to the crow energy and the king of swords showing up in the same place as blessings. I'm just getting mental agility, your mind being so much more stronger, the way you see the world, the way you see yourself in the world. And what I love about the energy that I'm feeling here. I'm not feeling someone having a negative and pessimistic and nasty outlook at the world and that's how they're transforming. I'm getting a person seeing, okay, this is just what it is. It's just what it is, okay? This was a situation and it helped me to learn and gain this and okay, boom, I'm showing up different. I'm doing things different. I just get someone being level-headed and conscious moving forward and learning that they can survive anywhere and survive anything. And not seeing the world or people in a way where the next time you're going to get the drop on someone or pull a wool over someone before they pull a wool over you. It's a matter of, I just get accountable vibes from a lot of you guys who selected this, feeling more accountable as in this was my role. This is how I contributed to this situation and it's not going to happen again. And it's not going to happen again because the next time that I meet someone or the next time this or that happen, I'm going to pay attention to how I start fantasizing and seeing this person as someone that they're not. Instead, I'm going to show up and see the person daily or whenever I see them for what I'm seeing within that moment. I'm going to recognize how whenever someone reminds me of home where I, I get that feeling like, oh, I've known this person my whole life and pay attention to like, do they remind me of my family in any way? Do they remind me of an ex or someone that I've known? And you start to realize how the mind the mind tends to project onto things that are familiar because they feel so safe and you're able to recognize what your own mind is doing and you're able to have control over your own mind and have control over your experiences and not delude yourself and then end up having moments where it's like, I hate people. Life is effed up. And it's like, nah, life is not effed up and I don't hate people. I just know now what I will allow from what I won't allow and that it comes down to me and that I have full control over my experience, what I will allow and what I won't allow. I just love how you guys are leveling up mentally and the power you're gaining. But of course, starting out with the lamb energy, you may have been frozen in place because of the trauma or whatever it is that you've experienced. But for me, every time I've experienced trauma in relationships and interactions with people, I leveled up more and it felt like all of my lessons came from interactions with people, whether they were in the salons or just crossing randomly or with my family members or relationships. But all my level ups came from me enter interacting with people because that's how I was able to see myself. That's how I, I was able to see how I was showing up, take my power back and create the kind of life and experience that I want. And I see that for you, group number three, and I'm happy for you. If you'd like to book a tarot card reading, the link is in the description box below. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a member on Patreon, where you can check out the exclusive weekly pick a card readings and other content that's shared there, the link for that is in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.